In the video today, I'm going to share with you guys the best cinematic settings for the GoPro Hero 9. So if you've got your hands on a GoPro Hero 9, you will know that the footage straight out of the box is pretty trash. And that's because GoPro don't set this up well in the factory settings. So it's up to us to actually set up the GoPro correctly so that you can get the best video settings out of this little guy right here. In the video today, I'm gonna to take about 10 minutes of your time and show you the best settings so that you can start getting some really beautiful cinematic footage with the GoPro 9. Let's jump into it and get started. So let's start by clicking on or touching this button here at the bottom in the middle. Now this gives you your different settings which you can customize and this is where we're going to change them so we can get the best cinematic settings for your video. Just click on any of these and then it's gonna open up some settings that we can change. So first up, we're gonna take a look at frames per second and resolution. This is really important and the great thing about the GoPro 9 is they have introduced 5K. So you've got that extra resolution. You've also got 4K, you've got 2.7K and you've got 1080p as well. Now in 5K mode, you've got 24 and 30 frames per second. You don't have any other options than this. With 4K, this jumps up, you've got 30 and you've got 60 frames per second if you do want to slow your footage down in post. When you get into the lower resolutions, like 2.7, you can jump this up to 120 frames per second to get that buttery slow motion footage. And it can look really nice when you use this. Also with 1080p, you can then bump this up to 240 and get ultra slow-mo if you're looking for that mode. In this setting though, we're looking to get the highest quality resolution and we're gonna change this to 5K and put it to 24, which is the best frames per second for cinematic footage. Now let's jump back into the settings area and the next setting is lens. You've got three options in lens. You've got the wide 16 to 34, you've got the middle here, which is the linear, and you've also got the narrow setting, which is the last one on the list. Now, what I will say is I don't usually shoot everything in wide unless I'm doing vlogs. I find that the middle setting linear is a great place to go. You've got enough in your scene and it's just one of them really nice ones that doesn't give you that warped edge like you get with the fisheye effect. Hyper smooth is super important. If you want to get smooth footage, then you've got to make sure this setting is on. Now it does give you a little bit of a crop of 10%, but it stabilizes your video, which makes all of the difference. Now, if you want to take it to the next level, you can put boost mode on, and usually I do. This keeps it really smooth. I've actually made a video on this, which I'm going to be releasing on the channel soon. Next up, we're just going to jump straight in to hindsight. So this is a really great feature where you can record 15 or 30 seconds before you actually click on that shutter button. And this is brilliant because you don't miss any of the action that you might need to record that you would do if you missed pressing the button down. ProTune is the next step in the settings that's important to look at. Bitrate, you've got standard and high. And if you're shooting anything above 2.7, you've got to make sure this is turned up to high. You need that extra bitrate to deal with the extra resolution. Shutter speed is something which you can change. Now, if you don't already know this, whatever your frames per second is, let's say it's 24 frames per second, you want to double this with your shutter speed so you can do that manually in the shutter speed setting here, or you can just put it to auto, and then what will happen is the GoPro will take care of this for you. The next setting is really important. This is exposure compensation. It's worth hearing this now, because if you're shooting outdoors and you're shooting in sunny conditions, you've got to put this down by at least one stop. Why? 
Well, it's because the GoPro 9 doesn't deal with harsh highlights very well and they can end up being really blown out. White balance, some people have reported issues with the white balance in the GoPro Hero 9 and they've said that it doesn't deal very well when you're outdoors and that's true. If you're outdoors once again in the sun, you can find that the white balance just kind of makes it look muddy and not very nice. So I advise that if you're in sunny conditions, just lower the Kelvin setting a little bit so you get that cooler tone. And then if you're in cloudier conditions, then you can just add the Kelvin up, push it up a little bit and get that warmer tone. But if you're indoors, leave it on auto because it's gonna take care of it for you. ISO is important to keep as low as possible. This determines the quality of your footage. So you wanna keep this on ISO 100 and just don't hire it to anything above that. But when it comes to ISO max, you need to look at this in a different way. You wanna keep this high, but not too high, because if you go above 1600, I found that the footage can start to fall apart. Now there might be times you need it higher if you're shooting in low light, but try and keep it no more than 1600 and the footage will stay pretty clean. Next up, with sharpness, I find that medium is a great setting to put it on. You've got enough sharpness going on, but you haven't got too much. Whereas if you actually put this in high mode, it can look just too over the top. Color, you've got GoPro's own color setting here, which I find is a little bit over the top. And if you wanna have as much control over your video as possible, put this down to a flat profile. This means that you can go into post and you can color the footage yourself. This is what everyone does when it comes to cinematic footage. If you're interested in LUTs which help you grade the colour of your footage, I'll leave a link to my cinematic LUT pack in the description of the video. The wind setting you can have on, you can have it on auto or you can have it off. Now if you've got a day which is windy and it's also kind of quiet as well and there's not much wind, leave it on auto. If you've got a windy day, leave it on. But if there's no wind at all, switch it off. And that's because the quality of the audio when this wind reduction is off is the best. So what we've done here is we've got the best quality video setting in 5K. Now we're gonna create our own profile for slow motion. And this is brilliant because when you're shooting a video, creating slow motion footage really adds extra something to your video footage. 2.7K, you can shoot up to 120 frames per second, which is great. If you jump into 1080p, you can even higher this more, where you can go up to 240 frames per second for extra slow motion. I like to leave it on 2.7K because you've got the higher resolution and that's the best setting. You've got more settings for lenses on this option. And the one that I choose is Linear Plus Horizon Leveling. And this takes care of your horizon while you're filming your footage. Now this is brilliant because you don't have to worry about always thinking that everything is straight and you've got your horizon level. Next up, we've discussed this before, but just put your hypersmooth on or in boost mode if you want that extra stabilization. Next up, let's just jump straight into the pro tune settings. We've got everything else the way we need it here. Now bit rate's high and the shutter speed is 240, which is double 120 frames per second. The downside of this is you can't change your exposure compensation, which means that if you're outside, you could run into some problems with harsh highlights. How do you take care of that? Well, you get some ND filters. There'll be a link in the description of the video for some well-priced ND filters, which can take care of that problem for you. Next up, let's take a look at white balance. All I do with this setting, once again, is I leave it the same. I leave it on auto if I'm shooting indoors, or I will change it if I'm not. Now, with ISO Max, I don't put it up to 1600 on slow motion at 2.7K, and that's because the quality is not as good, which you'll probably notice when you're shooting video. I leave it on 800, and I don't go above that setting. 
Sharpness is on medium, I've got my color on flat, and my wind on auto. Now these shortcut settings are really cool. You can add these into your main home screen. So when you actually come on to record your footage, you can change things like the ISO, which I can do here, or you can change other settings like your white balance or your lens or something else. So you've got four of these options that you can add. So it's worth adding these to just kind of customize your home screen as well. Okay, so we've got the two settings sorted. We've got our main resolution setting, which is the best quality cinematic footage, and we've got slow motion for that nice slow motion footage. If we scroll the screen down, we've got other options as well, which you don't really need to pay much attention to. But if you're a starter and you haven't got um, that leveling mode on with your lens, you can add in a grid. And this just means you can take care of your horizon by checking these grid lines and making sure everything's level. Finally, I'm just gonna scroll across and then we're gonna take a look at some preferences which we can change here. Go into general, and one thing that I think is important to make sure that you've got selected is your anti-flicker. You see, if you're from America or from Canada, you will be shooting in PAL mode, which means you wanna change this to 50 hertz. But if you're in the UK, then keep this on 60 because you'll be shooting with NTSC. And this just ensures that your frame rates are correct with the hertz here. I hope you've enjoyed the video today, guys, on the settings and setup for the GoPro Hero 9. If you have enjoyed it, make sure you hit subscribe and join our thriving community here at Ben's Guide. Also, please leave me a comment and let me know if there's anything I haven't added in the video today and I can get back to you after the video is finished. Whatever you do for the rest of the day, guys, make sure it's a good one and I'll see you in the next video.